Hey everyone, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener and it's dahlia time. Um, you know, you guys all know that I'm nuts for dahlias. I spend a lot of time thinking about them, planning for them, ordering them, starting to grow them. Um, all of the dahlias you see in this garden were planted in, started in pots uh, in mid-April. So we've been growing these and tending these since mid-April and it's nice to finally have that payoff. So instead of giving you a little dahlia tour, because honestly there's a lot of dahlias that aren't blooming yet, uh, the front of the house where I grow all the big dinner plates just starting to bloom now. But I thought maybe um, instead of just you know, walking through things, we could actually build a little bouquet. And at the same time, maybe I'll talk you through a little bit of deadheading and when and how to pick dahlias if you want them to last in a bouquet. So let's go check out what's happening back here first. So sometimes bees like to sort of rest or sleep or whatever bees do in dahlias. So here's a little guy who's just hanging out inside this, uh, beautiful Crichton honey dahlia. And deadhead dahlias about twice a week. I actually happen to really like deadheading. Um, but again, the more you cut out the old ones, the more flowers you're gonna get. Now this one is actually pretty good for cutting for a bouquet. You can see it's not completely open at the center yet, but the petals are starting to curve around. Now when you cut a dahlia, whether you're deadheading it or cutting it for a vase, you want to cut as low as you possibly can. So always go down to where it meets something else. And if there are, we'll find one in a little bit here, I hope. If there are no side buds that you'll be cutting off, then cut down to the next thing. So cut as low as you can without cutting off your next flowers. Now I don't get the longest stems on some of these dahlias because I have not pinched out these side buds. So you can see that this flower is gonna open and it goes to here, but there is another flower that will start here. That's because I grow these mostly as garden plants. So I'm interested in the most flowers rather than longer stem length like you would be if you were a cut flower gardener or growing it specifically for that. So this stem will only be this long when I, so this will have to be a very short bouquet when I cut this one out if I decide to use that one inside. When I'm um, working on deadheading flowers, I like to use these needle nose tip uh, pruners. This one happens to be from Milwaukee. It's, a, it's, it's relatively inexpensive and I buy them anytime I place an order from them just to have a pair around. Um, but there are plenty of other brands that make a nice needle nose um, pruner as well. I'm just gonna pick a couple more of these because you can't go wrong with Crichton honey. This one is deadheading. See again, see again how the petals are all the way wrapped around and they're just falling out at the bottom. So obviously that's not going to keep in a vase at all. Hey gang, if you like what you're seeing, if you want to see more about flowers or dahlias or anything that's happening in the garden, make sure you subscribe. It's completely free and if you hit the little bell next to it, you should get notifications when I post a new video if YouTube feels like doing that. So this is actually a really beautiful dahlia that's new to me this year. This is um, K.A.'s Mocha Joe, and it's really pretty. Unfortunately, I kept these on because I wanted to show you what's happening, and I'm actually going to cut off a bud on this one. So, so, okay, so do you see this flower? See how all the petals are sort of um, nipped off? There's a bunch of black stuff in there. So yesterday I saw a whole bunch of Japanese beetles on this flower. So that's Japanese beetle damage. And you can see that they're really hitting this plant hard. This plant is a, is a dahlia I actually grew from a cutting this year. So um, I think it's still a healthy plant, but um, they're just, they're really after this one. I'm gonna see, here's another one. And even though that's just starting to open, I mean, this flower is never gonna turn into much because we've lost all these petals on the top. Um, so I'm just gonna cut that out. Now, if I wanted much longer stems on the next round of flowers, instead of say cutting this, this goes to, this bloom goes to right here. So that would be a very short length. What I would do is sacrifice these side buds and cut all the way down back to where it meets at the bottom of the plant down there, um, because that will give me a longer stem length on the next one. Now let me see if I can find some good flowers of this so you can actually see what this flower looks like. Well, unfortunately I can't find any good flowers right now, but um, I think you can see it gets kind of a cafe au lait color around the edges with sort of a rosier center on it, but it's, it's a more muted color. It's not a bright pink at all. It's 
quite pretty. So hopefully we can keep the Japanese beetles off this long enough to get some good flowers out of this one. Okay, do you see what I see over there? I think that's Hamari Gold. I'm gonna go grab that. Well, unfortunately, this one also was kind of shot in the back, but isn't this a beautiful one? That's Hamari Gold. And then this one I actually don't have the name for because I didn't dig around, but that's also a really beautiful bloom. Unfortunately, we're dealing with short stem syndrome there. A lot of times the first dahlias you cut will have shorter stems, and then as you cut, for, you know, cut and deadhead more, you'll get longer stems to make better bouquets. Or you just have to, if you really want that, you just have to sacrifice some of those side buds. No big deal. So I just quickly want to show you like three stages of a dahlia flower ending its life. So here you can see that it's losing its petals and the calyx is just sort of open like that. Then it moves on to this next one. And this is where all the petals have fallen off, but you just kind of see the inside of the flower. And then when you see them get pointy like this, that means that they're closing up, they're getting ready to, you know, develop that seed that's going to be in there. Um, and you can see that there's, they get quite slimy. So um, these are the two, the two sort of stages that you might um, mistake for a new flower starting but they're decidedly slimy. And as soon as you see a triangle rather than a ball, you know that's a spent dahlia flower, so you should cut that stem out. We're in a bit of an orange section of the garden here, but I thought I'd just show you a few that I just cut out. This is this is um, HS First Love right here. More of an apricot color than its sister. They're very similar though, you guys. Let's see if I can get one here. This is kind of a newer flower. More of an apricot color than its sister, HS Date, which is the kind of brighter orange one there and then we also have this is kelsey annie joy this is called a collarette daisy see how it's got that little frill in the in the center that's the collarette part these two are ka's mocha katie really cool pink orange yellow color on these i'm really enjoying that one and this is jomanda which is probably one of the best ball orange dahlias that i think is out there Just want to show you, do you see this? I've become accustomed to looking for this now. Little black thing in there. It's a Japanese beetle. So he gets to join his friends in the Japanese beetle swimming pool. Here in the Circle Garden, I grow uh, two different kinds, and this is Jowy Morella, my favorite dark dahlia. Um, you always need that dark. And then this is new for me this year, such an interesting one. This is, um, Z Z I can't ever say it, Zernder Mystery Fox. And I think it's called that because you can see the range of colors that come over to very pink to almost rusty orange. I like it a little bit more every day. Now this one flower down here, which is the pinkest one, is also the oldest one. I'm gonna cut that out because it's losing its petals. Okay, we do have some big dahlias and I thought we'd cut a couple of them, even though they might be getting towards the end of their life. This, this is Thomas Edison, isn't this gorgeous? By the way, check it out next to that orange on this Tropicana canna. That's a pretty great combo, right? And then here we've got a labyrinth, which is done but uh, still pretty on top.
Hen Hill Dark Monarch. This is Breakout. Uh, these three dark guys is Nui Dita. This is Vasamagos. This, if you can believe it, is Cafe Ole, which right now is bright white. This flower is actually done. You can see it's got brown on the tips. And then we have another um, breakout there. All right, let's put these in a, let's put these all in a vase. So I am gonna attempt to put these all in the same vase, which is probably a little crazy, but uh, that's me, right? So I think I'll start with these big guys. And I do have a um, pin cushion frog in there. I still can't get over that. That's the way Cafe Olay is looking right now. Cafe Olay is a color changer, so it will absolutely um, get some of those colors later on. And then this is Breakout at its most lemony yellow, which is also sort of unusual. Stick these guys. Well, those guys will go with the other ones. I have to go with a pretty short vase because I've got a lot of short stems here, except for this, this great guy. He's got a nice long stem. If you guys can hear that crazy sound, that's the sandhill cranes. Okay, I'm gonna put these together. So I make little bouquets like this quite often because when I go around and deadhead, I tend to cut most of the flowers. And that way I'm deadheading what needs deadheading. And uh, I've got some flowers to, for a little bouquet. And they don't necessarily last long. Like this one's, this, see, I'm not even gonna put that one in. That's Wizard of Oz. And see how it's losing those petals? I'm just gonna leave that one out. Cause that'll just, that'll be a mess on your kitchen table before you know it. This little short guy in there. Now these colors decidedly don't go together. But I'm sort of of the theory that all flowers match. So I'm just gonna go with that. Plus it's a bouquet for my table. So I get to pick what it looks like. Okay. We need some more to fill that area. Okay, let's get some uh, good old fashioned crate and honey going in the middle there. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing just what's happening with the dahlias right now. Like I said, it's been a bit of a challenging year, but um, it'll get better. Dahlias just keep growing. That's the beauty. They're just getting into their stride now. Um, we'll have these until October, so it'll be, it'll be beautiful. So there'll be a lot more bouquets like this and a lot more deadheading to do too. Okay, I hope you're having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon.